Today's little devotion is not going to be very long. I'm calling it No Pain, No Rain. The gospel message to the church is that we are now saved by grace through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone, by nothing, and that after we're saved, we can do nothing in order to keep ourselves saved. Jesus does the keeping. Isn't that a marvelous thing to know? All through 13 letters to the churches, the Apostle Paul stressed the fact that salvation is a free gift that we can do nothing to earn and that once we receive it, it's ours to keep and that the Holy Spirit will be our guide unto death. In Romans 5, we're told six times in four verses that salvation is a gift. Three of those six times, the word before gift is free. It's a free gift, a free gift, a free gift. Salvation, it's a free gift. Romans 5.15, it's the free gift, the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, and it hath abounded unto many. Verse 16 calls salvation the gift and also the free gift. Verse 17 calls salvation the gift of righteousness by Jesus Christ. Verse 18, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Salvation is a free gift. A gift is not earned or traded for. Once the gift is given and received, it's ours to keep. John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Once you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart to live in you and you are put into the body of Christ, the church. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. John 10, 28 through 30 says, And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Someone asks, what if I leave him? What if I pluck myself out of his hand? Well, you can't do that. Once you're saved, you are his hands. You are a part of the body of Christ. You are his hands. You are his mouth. You are his feet in this world. In John 3, Jesus told Nicodemus that to have eternal life, a person must be born again. And that happens when we believe on Jesus Christ to be our Savior, the Holy Spirit, comes in to be with us forever. He will be our guide even until death. A born-again person during this age in which we live can never be unborn once they're born again. Nobody in anybody or uh, any other age, for that matter, can be born again. We are the one and only that can be born again right here and now in this church age. 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen says... For by one Spirit are we baptized into one body. 1 Corinthians twelve twenty seven. Now ye are the body of Christ. Ephesians 1, 22 through 23. The church is his body. Romans 12, 4 through 5. We, being many, are one body in Christ. Ephesians five thirty. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Colossians 1 24, Christ's body is the church. When God the Father looks at us, he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ in us. He does not see our old, natural, ugly, filthy nature. He sees the new born again part, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ in us. So, we cannot even take ourselves out of God's hands once we're saved because, 
as I said, we are God's hands on this earth. We are supposed to be going about doing what Jesus would do, saying what Jesus would say, being what Jesus would be, letting people in this world today get a little bitty glimpse of Jesus Christ and what he's like. Are you doing that? What if you quit believing? Well, the background of Paul's letter to Timothy is the Christian persecutions under the Emperor Nero, and they were horrible, horrible. One never knew when he was going to be drug out into the streets and uh, torched or thrown to the lines or have his head cut off. One just never knew. Paul is telling Timothy to teach the church that even if things get so bad that they quit believing, tell them, tell them, Timothy, that Jesus still knows they belong to him, whether they know it or not. <laughs> In 2 Timothy 2.12, Paul is talking about those who do have to suffer for Christ. And he's saying that they will be rewarded by reigning with him. But those who deny him, and some will deny him rather than to suffer with him. For those who deny him, they will be denied a reign and a crown. Those that deny Jesus, Jesus will deny a reign and a crown. The context of the chapter is reigning and having a crown. But hey, their salvation is settled. It's settled. Second Timothy 2 11 through 13 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Again, the context. The context is speaking of being denied rewards in the millennial kingdom of Christ. He's speaking of rewards in heaven for the good we've done on earth. He's not talking about salvation because... Once we have received God's free gift of salvation, it's ours no matter what. We have too many clear verses telling us that truth. Having spoken of suffering and denying Christ, Paul goes on to say in verse 13, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Even if things get so bad that we quit believing he's still faithful, he cannot deny himself. We're a part of him. He can't deny himself. We are a part of his body. Ephesians 5.30, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. After talking about the suffering and the reigning, 2 Timothy 2.19, Paul says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. The word nevertheless means no matter what, nevertheless, notwithstanding, that is in opposition to anything or without regarding it. Nevertheless, even if you deny him, even if you quit believing, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Even if we get to doubting and don't know who we belong to, He knows. Even if we quit believing, the Lord knows them that are His, having this seal. And you ought to look up that word seal sometimes. The Lord knoweth them that are His. If you have ever been saved, then you are sealed, safe, and secure, and sure of having a home in heaven when you die. It's been paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And salvation is a free gift. It's yours. If you see a verse that seems to tell you that you're lost again, you're probably looking at a verse written to those outside of the church age. Um, Christians living from the cross to the rapture of the church are sealed by the blood of Jesus. Sometimes we're a mess, but we're the mess <laughs> that belongs to Jesus Christ. We're His. He'll take care of us. He's going to straighten it all out. We forfeit a happy life here and rewards in heaven, a reign and a crown or crowns if we don't follow the teachings of Jesus. But salvation is ours forever. Our Father does not kick us out of the family when we sin, but is forever trying to help us back to Him 
so to live the best life possible, confess sin to Jesus. No matter how many times you have to confess that, Lord, I did it again, help me again. No matter how much you struggle with a particular sin, confess it to him. Ask him to help for help to overcome it. Hebrews 4.16 tells us we can always come boldly to his throne of grace to find help in time of need. No matter how many times we goof up, our Father is never too busy for us. So if you are saved and still struggling with the particular sin in your life, you're not lost again. Don't let the devil slip you that lie. Don't let him defeat you with that thought. You're just living a sloppy Christian life. You're just living a sloppy Christian life instead of living your purpose-filled life that God means for you to have, instead of living the happy life that God means for you to have. To the church at Corinth who was in the same situation, living a horribly sloppy life, Paul didn't say, get saved again. He didn't say, you better go ask forgiveness. You better get on your knees, boy. Or are you going to hell? No, no, no. He didn't say any of that. What he said was, don't you know who you are? Don't you know who you are? You're a child of God. You're a child of God. Act like it. Straighten up. Act like it. <laughs> if you're not saved, why not? Why not. We have such a loving, compassionate Heavenly Father. He came to earth, He lived, and He died, and He arose again, paying the price for our sin, for the sin of the whole world. Your sin, my sin, past, present, and future sin is all paid for in full. Our part, our part in the whole deal is to turn to Jesus in belief as the one who did that for you. Receive him into your heart by belief now and be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's so simple. And then to have a happy life. Follow his teachings. When you goof up, go to the throne of grace. When you goof up, get up. Start over again. You don't have to get re-saved. You're already saved. You're already His child. I pray that you'll do this today and I pray for all of my YouTube listeners and subscribers. God bless you.